Now on to our dinosaur of the day, Anki Ceratops, which was a request from Victrix via our Patreon and Discord. So thanks. Anki Ceratops was a chasmosaurine ceratopsid that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Alberta, Canada. It looked similar to Triceratops. It had the two long brow horns and a short nasal horn. The frill was long and rectangular, and there were these triangular projections along the edges. So little triangles along the edges. Hmm. So I guess the big difference there is that it had a rectangular frill, because Triceratops I wouldn't really call it rectangular. Triceratops' frill wasn't really ornamented either. Oh, yeah. I think when it was younger, it was a little bit, but you're right. As it got older, it was pretty smooth around the edge. Inkyceratops was also stout and muscular, and it walked on all fours. It had a short tail and a beak, and the beak is what makes it a ceratopsian, which surprised me when I first found out. Anyway, it was medium-sized, estimated to be up to 14 feet or 4.3 meters long, and estimated to weigh 1.2 tons. That's kind of on the small to medium size. Mm. The fossils were first found in 1912 by Barnum Brown along the Red Deer River. They found three partial skulls, and then Barnum Brown described it in 1914. And the holotype includes the back half of the skull and the long frill. Brown wrote in 1914, quote, Besides showing a unique type of crest, this genus adds one more link in the morphological chain by which the Ceratopsian crest has been developed. End quote. Yeah, they also made a cast of the brain that, quote, in accuracy of detail has rarely been equaled in fossil crania, end quote. And I was surprised because I thought making casts of the brain was a more recent thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, like an endocast in the skull? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was pretty advanced. The type and only species is Anchiceratops ornatus. The genus name means near horned face or near ceratops. Brown thought that Anchiceratops was a transitional dinosaur that was closely related and in between Monoclonius and Triceratops. And now Monoclonius is not considered valid, so. Yes, and Anchiceratops is a ceratopsian, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the species name Ornatus refers to the ornamentation on its frill. Charles M. Sternberg found a complete, more slender skull in 1924. He described it in 1929 as the second species of Anchiceratops, Anchiceratops longirostris. But now Anchiceratops longirostris is considered to be a junior synonym of Anchiceratops ornatus. Most Anchiceratops fossils have been found in the Horseshoe Canyon Formation. Some have been found in the Oldman and Dinosaur Park Formations. Those may be early Anchiceratops ornatus or possibly even a second species of Anchiceratops. And some fossils have been found at the St. Mary River Formation, but those are too fragmentary to refer to a specific species. That's still a pretty good collection. Mm-hmm. There's fossils also possibly found in the Almond Formation in Wyoming in the U.S., and there are one or two possible bone beds found in Alberta, but those haven't been described. What has been described and found are 10 skulls. Wow, that is quite the collection. Yeah, and they show individual variation, but in the past, paleontologists thought that the differences were due to sexual dimorphism. They thought the larger skulls were, with the longer horns were males. But that variation in the skulls, specifically like the size of the horns and the frill, could be due to ontogeny. Like it just changed as it grew up. So some are just older, basically. Mm. Or more developed and the same age. <laughs> There's one specimen found that had 30 tail vertebrae, which was interesting because most chasmosaurs have 46 tail vertebrae. It also had a long pelvis and a long neck. But this specimen, which is NMC8547, it may actually be a rhinoceratops, not anchiceratops. If that's the case, then that means there hasn't really been any anchiceratops skeletons described, only the skulls. Because hmm. that was the only one really with the skeleton. Jordan Mallon in 2010 said that the skeleton Sternberg collected in 1925 was complete and articulated, and Sternberg attributed it to anchiceratops, quote, although he did not give a reason for his identification, end quote. <laughs> Just like, well, that one's an Anchiceratops. Yeah. Moving on. And that's why there's some debate, and maybe it's a Rhinoceratops instead. Anchiceratops lived in a subtropical climate. 
other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place included manoraptorans, such as Epicurostenodes, ornithomimids, such as ornithomimus, pachycephalosaurids, such as Spherotholus, hadrosaurs, like Edmontosaurus, ceratopsians, such as pachyrhinosaurus, and tyrannosaurs, like Albertosaurus. Anchiceratops fossils have been found in marine sediments, so it may have lived in estuaries, where rivers meet oceans or larger bodies of water. In 1959, Juan Langston Jr. suggested Anchiceratops was semi-aquatic and that its long snout helped it walk through deeper swamps <laughs> and its frill helped it counterbalance and it would point its beak upwards so it could take breaths and that its short tail and large body and stocky limbs made it sluggish and it would have, quote, enjoyed relative seclusion and protection of a swampy environment, end quote. <laughs> That's such a weird idea. <laughs> the idea that a semi-aquatic animal would have a huge bony thing exactly perpendicular to the way you move through the water mm. is bold. <laughs> <laughs> but at that time, there were a lot of paleontologists thought a lot of dinosaurs were semi-aquatic. Yeah. And actually, in this case, most paleontologists didn't agree that Anchiceratops was semi-aquatic. But Jordan Mallon suggested that NMC 8547, that possible Orhinoceratops specimen, was like a modern hippo. And that's why it was so robust and muscular, but the small tail didn't help. And its body type may have helped it move through muddy lowland swamps. Mallon wrote, quote, it's possible that other ceratopsids were also adapted to semi-aquatic life as the clade shares several features in common with the hippo. It's important to limit speculation via reference to circumstantial sedimentology, however, as several ceratopsids are known from well-drained alluvial settings, end quote. In other words, near rivers. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> he's basically saying it could be that they spent a bunch of time in water or they were near rivers and got washed downstream. Yep. It's really hard for us to know. Because even if all they did was go to streams to drink water, there's always a chance that when you go to drink that water, you end up getting washed out to sea. Mm. Or they could be spending all of their time in this water. You never know. You just got to find more fossils. <laughs> it's a hard one to nail down, though. That's true. Now, Anchiceratops ornatus, the species, lasted about one and a half to two million years. There are other ceratopsid species that lasted a long time. Triceratops horridus was for about one and a half million years, and Pentaceratops sternbergi was about two and a half million years. But in the dinosaur park formation where Anchiceratops was found, most of those species only lasted about 700,000 years. So this species, Anchiceratops ornatus, lived or lasted for a long time. It's possible because there just wasn't as much dinosaur diversity in the formation, and there wasn't as much competition for food. Or it could be that because the Western Interior Seaway was shrinking at that time, there wasn't as much habitat fragmentation, so Anchiceratops seems to have lasted longer. Or it could be that Anchiceratops was just good at dealing with environmental changes. Hmm. Yeah, those late Cretaceous ones, we have so much better data on when the fossils were around, especially like you said, we have 10 complete skulls. Mm -hmm. So you can start to piece together the length of time it was around. Whereas usually when we say stuff like it lived around 100 to 95 million years ago, those are like the error bars. Yeah. <laughs> Not the actual amount of time that it lived for. I hope we do find out eventually at least some dinosaurs that were semi-aquatic mm -hmm. or mostly aquatic because it depends how you define semi-aquatic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess gut contents is probably the way to do it. Like mm -hmm. if we found some Anchiceratops with gut contents and it was nothing but like seaweed. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because even if it's fish, you don't know. Yeah. But if it was all, you know, fish and seaweed, then you'd be like, okay, well, it was, it was definitely doing something in the water a <laughs> lot of time. At least on that day. Mm -hmm. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left. <laughs> 